Hi, in this video I, there are two things I'd like to demonstrate. And the first is to give you a graphical demonstration of how binomial probability distributions work using this histogram of a distribution. And then to show you how this relates to how your calculator works when using the function binomial CDF. Now what you're looking at is a binomial probability distribution for a sample size of n equal to 20, or in other words, 20 independent trials. The probability of success is set at 0.5 or 50%, and that's set using this red slider. Now at 50%, we get this nice symmetric distribution. There are 21 bars in this histogram, one for, for each possible outcome from x equals 0 to x equals 20. The height of the bars represents the probability associated with each outcome. And you can use this blue slider to select a bar on the graph and find out what the probability is for that outcome. It highlights the bar you've selected. Okay, so let me put this into a, a practical context to help you understand what this graph represents. Imagine you're flipping a coin and you're interested in the number of times you flip heads. The probability of flipping heads on a fair coin is 50%, and so this histogram represents the probability of every outcome that you might get when you flip the coin 20 times. The highest bar occurs at x equal to 10, which means that getting heads 10 times in 20 flips is the most likely outcome. The height of that bar, or in other words, the probability of getting 10 heads in 20 flips is shown here, and it's about 17.6%. So, for example, if we want to know the probability of getting heads 9 times in 20 flips, we adjust the slider to x equal 9, and that tells us the probability is about 16%. So it's slightly less likely to occur than getting heads 10 times, but it wouldn't be unusual if you did get that. Next I'm going to do uh, an example of uh, an application problem so that I can show you how binomial CDF on your calculator works. In this example, imagine you're spinning a prize wheel at a carnival, and the prize wheel is divided into eight sections, two of which are red. And if you land on a red section, you win. So the probability of winning, or the probability of success, is 2 out of 8, or 25%. Now let's suppose you bought 20 tickets, and you get to spin the wheel 20 times. That tells us the first two quantities that we need to know to answer questions about this probability situation. Let's take a look at the distribution of probabilities on the histogram for this situation. What I'm going to do is adjust the probability of success to 0.25, you can see it changes the shape of the distribution now. Uh, n equal 20 is a fixed quantity for this particular worksheet. Now the first question you might be asked in this situation is, how many times would you expect to win? Well, 25% of 20 spins is 5, so you would expect to win 5 times. Now this is what we call the mean or expected value of this distribution, and it's shown down here at the bottom of the histogram. And that's this quantity mu. Now, the expected value is not always going to come out as an integer value, as it does here. Remember that this is a mean, or an average, so it represents the average of all outcomes if you were to repeat this scenario many, many times. So if you can imagine there was a line of people lined up at the prize wheel, and each person had 20 tickets to spin the wheel 20 times, and then if you kept track of how many times each of those persons won, and took the average of that, your value, or that average, would approach this quantity, mu equal to 5. Now let's take a look at what the histogram shows us. In the real world, you're not always going to win exactly five times. There's going to be some random variation that can lead to different outcomes. You might win, say, four times, or six times, or even eight times, or whatever. Uh, if you want to find the probability of winning four times in 20 spins, we set the slider to x equal four, and we find that the probability is about 19%, and that's shown here. Um, and to win six times, for example, the probability of that happening would be just a little bit under 17%. As a rule of thumb, an event's considered unusual if the probability of it happening is less than 5%. So, for example, it would be unusual to win the game only one time because the probability of that happening is about 2.1%. Now, finding the probability associated with a single outcome or a single value of x uh, is not a very interesting question. More often we're asked to find the probability of winning, say, at least nine times, or no more than three times, or something like that. And this next example I want to do asks that question. What's the probability that you'll land on red no more than three times in 20 spins? So we're interested in finding the probability of winning zero times, 
one time, two times, or three times. And in our terms of our probability notation, that's going to be p of 0 plus p of 1 plus p of 2 plus p of 3. Now to give you a visual representation of what's going on, I'm going to go back to the worksheet and I'm going to set the slider to x equal 3. Now when I click on this checkbox where it says show cumulative probability, what you're going to see are the four bars representing those four probabilities are highlighted. And the sum of those probabilities is given up here near the top of this graph. P of 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3 is equal to about 22.5%. Okay, now this quantity in purple represents what binomial CDF will calculate on your calculator. Uh, it always starts with the probability of the outcome x equal to 0 and sums up to whatever x value you specify. Um, now, so to find the probability of winning no more than three times on your calculator, let me show you how we do that. I'm going to bring up the calculator and then I'm going to go into the distribution menu, which is the second or shift function over the VARS key and I'm in this first submenu, I'm going to arrow up to get to binomial CDF. Oops, went too far. And then I press enter to put it on the main window. And binomial CDF, as you may know, takes three inputs. Uh, the first input is n, so that's 20, comma p, which is in our example 0.25, comma, and then we're going to specify the highest value of x that you're summing starting from x equals 0. And so that highest value is 3. So I'm going to enter 3, and then when I press enter, it returns the probability that we saw in the worksheet of about 22.5%. Now the, last, the next example I want to demonstrate would be how to answer a question like, what is the probability that you'll land on red 5 or more times out of 20 spins? And that means I want to find the probabilities associated with getting 5 wins, or 6 wins, or 7 wins, and so on, up to 20 wins. Um, and on our probability notation, that's going to look like this. P of 5 plus P of 6 plus P of 7, and so on, up to P of 20. Now, I'm going to go back to the, to the histogram to show you what this situation looks like. And I'm going to set the slider to x equal 4. Now, when I set the slider to x equal 4, you can see that the probabilities that I want now are the ones that are in green. So how can I use binomial CDF to compute the sum of these green probabilities? And keep in mind, the probabilities out here from 12 on to 20 are so small, they're probably about zero. Um, but for this demonstration here, when I refer to the green bars, they're going to be the ones from x equal 5 to x equal 20. So again, so how can I use binomial CDF to sum up all of these probabilities from 5 to 20? You need to remember that the probabilities of all of the outcomes for any probability distribution are going to sum to 1. So if I start with 1, then I can subtract out the probabilities that I don't want, which are the ones in blue from 0 to 4, and that will leave the probabilities that I do want from 5 to 20. Let me show you how to do this mathematically. Okay, so here is the sum of all of the outcomes, the probabilities of all of the outcomes. Uh, for our histogram, from p of 0 to p of 20, and that is equal to 1. And I want to recognize, or I want you to recognize, that the sum of the probabilities from x equals 0 to x equals 4 can be found using this binomial CDF expression, okay? And again, that's, this is the expression that represents the blue bars on the histogram, okay, from 0 to 4. Now what I do is I'm going to subtract this off from the left side of the equation, and what that leaves is the sum of the probabilities for the green bars from p of 5 to p of 20. So, in conclusion, in order to find the probabilities from x equal 5 to x equal 20, I need to enter this expression in the calculator. 1 minus binomial CDF for n equal 20, p equal 0.25, and x equal to 4. And let me go ahead and do that to show you how. 1 minus and I'm in the distribution menu and I'm going to use the keystroke shortcut now, alpha b uh, for the 84's. If you're on the 83, the keystroke shortcut would be alpha a. Um, and the inputs were 20, comma, 0.25, comma, 4. And now when I press enter, it returns a probability of about 58.5%. Okay, so those are two different kinds of questions that you can answer using binomial CDF, and you can play with this binomial distribution worksheet at my website, purplemonkeymath.com. It's in the uh, intro stats 
section and look for the worksheet entitled Binomial Distribution and Equal 20. Um, and I hope that will help you to get a better understanding of binomial probability distributions and what they look like and, and hopefully that will help you to also understand how binomial CDF works on your calculator. Thanks for watching.